I'd like to welcome everybody to my presentation today. My name is Joseph Richter and I'm going to talk about certification. Hi everybody. I hope you enjoy the content I've prepared for you. Put a lot of time and effort into it. So much so that there's a lot of material that couldn't make it to the live broadcast simply because of the time constraints of this format. But we are working on a website to put a lot of the content for you to go back and review uh, because there is 16 and more tests being added to the certification process and we want to make sure that we get you the right information at the time that you need it. Again, one hour we're going to cover some basic tips and tricks. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So these are the topics that we're going to discuss today. Number one, why consider becoming certified? We'll talk about how to purchase a certification exam. Then I'll take you over to the certification center. We'll discuss some of the prerequisites, obviously not all of them. We'll also talk about some of the general certification goals. And as I'm going through here, we'll discuss a lot of the different certification tips. And then I'll cover briefly the certified SolidWorks associate. We'll take a look at the professional maybe take a look at one advanced exam and finally I'll show you a little bit about the certified SolidWorks expert exams that's right plural and then I'll finish out with my final thoughts so why become certified well this is all going to depend on your current status if you're fresh out of high school and you're planning on going to college whatever this is a great way to claim bragging rights among your peers as this is the official way to get recognized in industry. And let's face it, it looks great on your resume when you're going after that first job. If you're currently unemployed, obviously companies are looking for the best and the brightest out there. And what better way to say, hey, I'm it, by having one of these certifications. That way it'll get your foot at least in the door for an interview. If you're currently employed, this is probably a majority of us. It's a great way to show your employer that you're dedicated to your craft. You're able to say that I've taken the time and effort to learn the program through and through and that I'm dedicated. So that might help lead to a raise and or a promotion. Likewise, you can convince your company that they could utilize your certification status. They can say, hey, look, our team is completely certified. They're not going to waste your time and money on learning the program we're just going to spend time and money on your project and if you're self-employed pretty much the same answer here you can use that in your contract bids to say hey look you know time and material I'm not going to waste your time on the program I'm going to use it to design your products and at the end of the day the main goal here is you want to make sure that the users that you're working with know how to use the program, they're going to build models that are going to be easy to modify and not waste time having to rebuild them. This is super important because if you get a brand new user that doesn't understand design intent into your group, one of the things they might wind up doing is deleting a lot of your lines, arcs, whatever. And that's actually the number one thing that you should never do in SolidWorks is delete. Okay, when you delete an object, you wind up wiping out all the children and that has a domino effect throughout. So you want to get users that know what they're doing and are dedicated to the craft. So from SolidWorks.com, if you don't yet have an account, you are going to want to hit the drop down here and either click on my.solidworks or SolidWorks customer portal. Either place, it's going to take you over here to log in, which if you don't yet have an account, you're going to want to create a SolidWorks ID. Okay, from within there, you're going to have to utilize your email address for your company and your SolidWorks serial number. Hit next and register. They'll obviously send you an email, make sure that it was you that was requesting the account. Okay, same story with my.solidworks. Uh, you would simply go to my SolidWorks and then go to log in and then it's going to take you to that same page. Same story, you're going to want to create that SolidWorks ID. All right, let me go ahead and launch one more quick poll here. Are you guys aware that with your paid SolidWorks subscription, you are entitled to test credits? 
So quite a few of you were not aware of this. That's in, that's why you're here, right? Um, and some of you are just finding out based on the nature of the poll question. Well, that's why we do this. Okay, I'll give you a few more seconds here to vote. Majority of you have voted. All right, awesome. So I mentioned that you can get a credit with your paid subscription. We'll definitely talk about that. But you can purchase your test credits at SolidWorks.com. You just simply go to the certification page and start purchasing these exams. And then, of course, with your paid SolidWorks subscription, you'll be able to go in there, log into your customer portal or my.solidworks account, and then you can get a, a redemption code rather that you can use to text SOLIDWORKS and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Now the offer is good for a core exam whether it's the certified associate or the certified professional. Okay, You'll be able to get one of those every six months and then you're going to be able to get one of the advanced exams whether it's drawing tools, surfacing weldments, sheet metal, mold making or the new additive manufacturing exam. And then here's some fine print about that. Obviously only do this when you're ready to take the exam. The vouchers do expire after six months, but you basically can take out one voucher between January and June, and then one between July and December. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so from SolidWorks.com, to purchase an exam, you would go right in here to support, and then click on certification below the training and from the SolidWorks certification program area you can go ahead and click on the certification catalog. This is going to show you all of the different exams that are available and in the quick links in the upper right hand corner you can obviously purchase a certification exam and then you'll be able to see the different exams that are available. So the certified SolidWorks associate is $99 Certified SolidWorks Professional, $99. Now the Certified SolidWorks Pro is actually a combination of three different tests and they've broken it out in case you need to take one of those segments over again. They're not going to tag you for the full cost, just the cost of that one slice. Certified Expert, $149 and so forth. Uh, when you're looking at some of the associate exams, they're going to be $20, 1995 etc. Okay, that's one way to purchase them. The other way to purchase them is when you click on one of the certifications, there's now a purchase or buy now button that you'll be able to click and that will also take you to a cart and you'll be able to do that. After you've obtained your credit, you're going to need to go over to the SolidWorks Certification Center. And once we're over there, we're going to be able to download the tester client. We'll be able to print out the certificates that we've earned, maybe take a look at some past results. Uh, managing your test credits, this one when we get over there I'm going to talk about for you hiring managers out there this is a great way to kind of like vet out your candidates so we'll take a look at that and then you can also decide whether or not you're listed in the online directory as well as find other certified users in your area. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a credit so as I go back here to the web page, I was mentioning the certification offer for subscription customers. Okay, when you click on that, this is going to take you to your login. All right, once you've logged in, it's going to cache the cookies and then it's going to give you this redemption code. Now this redemption code is based on your login there. Once you obtain your, your redemption code, you would simply click on these instructions and this is going to tell you how to do all this. So as I scroll down here, it talks about you know when you're on subscription, you get one of these codes. They talk about how to get it, have you log in, etc. Okay, once you get your redemption code, you're going to want to take that redemption code and then utilize it with one of these acronyms for one of the exams. So in this situation here, this sample user wants to take the certified associate and the drawing tools so they need that redemption code and then they're going to take their mobile phone and they're going to text to that phone number right there along with the CSWA for the associate and then DT for drawing tools. Once that text is received by the system it will send you back 
some codes here. And then you'll be able to take that code right over into the virtual tester side and then dial it in. Okay. So again, the important part is that you get a hold of a customer portal account. A majority of you already have that. So now you know how to get your own credits. And then to get over to the certification center, which you would click on this button or from the certification catalog, they also have a button for there. And so here's my certification center. Uh, you would have to download your Tester Pro client, which I'm going to go ahead and do here. And then once you have it downloaded, you can fire off that executable, agree to the terms, and let it install. Obviously pick out your language, in this case English. So if this is your very first time and you don't yet have a certification account, yeah, you're going to need to fill this out. My comment about this is make sure you spell your first and last name correctly and in the right case. Okay, This is the one area of your profile you will not be able to change once you've created your account. If you do run into issues, I suppose you can contact us here in support and we can talk to the certification team and see if they can adjust or correct any misspelling. But uh, bottom line is they're trying to prevent fraud here. right? They don't want you to earn a certificate and then allow your buddy to basically rename the user who earned that certificate. So again, this is for your protection more than anything else. Everything else can be modified. Uh, your email address, like when your company changes email or what have you, you can obviously update your password and all that. But again, first and last name, you can't do that. In this case, I already have an account. So when I log in with my username, it's going to, based on my account, show me what credits that I have. Again, these credits would be ones that you would purchase. So I have a few credits on here, and obviously I would just hit start exam when I'm ready. But specifically, if I went in there, got the redemption code, did the whole mobile phone thing, and got a text back, then I would need to use one of those voucher codes. So in this situation, I have a surfacing voucher, and you would essentially take that, that code that they send you, and then you would paste that right in there. And when you hit submit, it's going to show you that this voucher has been redeemed successfully. And my account now has one credit. And then you'd have to take that exam in here. And I can go ahead and launch that. So there's the surface design. You pick out your language. And then you hit start exam. Now, I'm not going to hit start exam here for obvious reasons. I want you guys to have uh, your own shot at this without spoiling any of the test. Now, after you've had the chance to take that exam and you've earned your certificate, in order to view that certificate, you're going to want to log in to the certification center here. And once you've done that, it'll show you your account. Okay, and the certification that has been earned by that user will show up here. Okay, and the different certificates have a couple of detailed information on it. For example, when the certificate was issued and earned. And there's also the certificate ID. That certificate ID is to help prevent fraud. So each cert has its own ID. Okay, and we can use that ID to prove out who has actually earned that certificate and what that actual certificate is. So you, you hiring managers out there, you probably see a lot of resumes talking about the Uber SolidWorks user who knows everything. And well, if they truly do and they have one of these certificates, not only will they say, hey, I'm a certified SolidWorks professional, but they will also have the certificate ID next to that certified professional. And then you can dutifully come over here to validate that certificate. Okay, so for example, if I was going to validate a certificate, if I have a code that somebody gave me, I can dial that in there, and then you have to do these glass break codes. So 893104, validate certificate, and then it's going to show you what certificate you're validating, when it was originally earned, so in this case my certified SolidWorks expert, and it was validated today. I said that the 
name for the user can't be modified. That's why that was so important when you set that up because when you submit a resume with your code, that's what the hiring manager is going to see. Now, when you're taking your exams, your exam scores will be maintained. So as we take a look here, you can see there's some sample exams in here, both pass and fail. Okay, now just because you fail something is not all is lost. I mean, you get valuable data here because on a failed exam, you can see which areas of the test you missed out on. So in this case, stage two, the update or the initial part update, they were totally missed, but the part modification here and there were correct. Now, depending on the exam, you'll get more information than others. So if I look at the uh, sample exam for the associate, for the assemblies, this person got it 100% correct. On the part modeling, they only got 25% correct, so they would need to work on their part modeling. And for drafting competency, yeah, they missed all those questions. Uh, again, depending on which area you're looking at, it gives you different information. For example, the associate simulation here, this user got 40% of the hands-on exercises correct, but they did fine on the shell elements and the beam elements and theoretical practical questions and got two-thirds of the load restraints and connectors. Half of the results were correct and then the rest were 100%. So this user would need to study results, load restraints, and the hands-on portion of the exam. So again, this allows you to, to figure out where you need to study. Now for those hiring managers out there, I mentioned you could manage your credits. Okay, so if I've purchased some credits, and I have them in here, I can then decide that I want to test out some candidates. Let, let's put on the hat of a hiring manager for a second. If I've got some prospects and I'm really excited about what they have to say in their resume, but they're not certified yet, and I don't want to just put them in the, the pile of do not bother with, but I actually am interested in them, uh, this here is going to be a win-win. Okay, it's a small price for me as a hiring manager in a company to spend a hundred bucks to validate a potential candidate. Okay, so what I can do here is I can grab one of these credits and I can create an exam voucher. Okay, once I create that exam voucher, I can specify whether it's trackable and obviously if I'm a hiring manager, I'm going to want to track that. So in this case, I want to say candidate, we'll call it candidate B. And then I can specify when this exam voucher expires, right? So maybe I'm in a hurry and I want them to take the test because I want to hold my interviews on Friday. So I might say, hey, they'll have till Friday to take that exam. And when I create that exam voucher, what ends up happening is you get this code here. And that's the code that you would submit or give to that candidate. You say, hey, look, I really like what I saw on your resume. I want you to take this exam and find out where you're at. So I would go ahead and issue that voucher. Now, when those vouchers are used, redeem voucher, once they have taken the test, they will show up here. So there's a couple different scenarios for the redeemed vouchers. Number one, if a uh, voucher expires, it will show up here. Maybe it's not used you can redeem it. In fact, you can pull back these vouchers at any time. It gives you complete control. Or here for candidate A, if they didn't take the test in time, it expires out, it does that. Or maybe you do have a candidate that takes an exam. You'll be able to see when they took the exam and the exam session ID. And then you'll also be able to see how they did on that test. Okay, and this is kind of where it gets exciting. When you go to the team info, you can select on that particular voucher code that you made, and then you can click on that user and find out the exam subject and the exam session and what they scored. So in this case, Barbara got 84, and it was required 80 points to pass. Okay, so I could have five candidates all going for the same job 
maybe they all passed. That's great. Uh, again, I call this a win-win because even if you don't hire that candidate, you've now given that candidate a certification that they can use for their next opportunity, right? Like you loved what they had to say. It just wasn't going to be a good fit, but they were an awesome user. Now they can add that to the resume for their next position that they're looking at. So again, this is kind of how you can go in there and use this credit system to validate users. Now, if you decided that you wanted to pull back one of these vouchers, you can obviously just hit the recycle button and then that will redeem that voucher and then it is no longer valid. Okay, but what happens here is it returns my credit. Okay, and then it will show up in the redeem vouchers here in terms of when I redeemed it or used it. So you're not going to lose anything by making these vouchers, but it's definitely going to help you vet out the users that you want to have potentially on your team. Now, I mentioned finding certified users in your area. If you take a look here, you'll be able to specify which area you're interested in looking at. So if I wanted to find the certified professionals, maybe in the United States, and I happen to be in Arizona here, so I'm just going to go to Arizona. And from here, I'll be able to take a look at the different users in the area. I can sort it by first name, last name, etc. So as you scroll here, you can see there's quite a few. Now as I scroll down, you'll notice that some users have a certain amount of stars. Okay, these different stars, as I pick on one of my students here, Javier, from Knox, he has quite a few certificates. Okay, you can see he has the certified SolidWorks professional. He got that back in 2012. He has the advanced sheet metal, drawing tools, weldment, surfacing, mold making, and the simulation professional, right? So maybe I get a resume from somebody and they don't have a code on there, but I believe that they are certified. This is kind of like the other way you can check to see if they're actually certified is to see if they're listed in the online directory but that would be up to the user. You have complete control over whether or not it shows up here. And then just another mention here, you can link your LinkedIn account to your thing here. So it doesn't look like Javier has his LinkedIn account here yet. Okay, and again, this is for each level of certification if I wanted to look at the experts. Okay, I'm gonna you know pick on another one of my students, Jason Ferris. An awesome user. He came through a bunch of my classes and he got started up in like a year and a half between, you know, associate, professional, and then expert. Pretty amazing. Good job, Jason. But what I want to point out here is the fact that, uh, again, you have your LinkedIn account you can put there. And like I said, when you get a resume from somebody, they should have that certificate ID. Now, I mentioned that you can specify whether or not you want to be listed. Right, so that would be where your settings are. Once you log into there, uh, list in the online directory, you would obviously say yes. Okay, and then that way it's gonna show up there. Like I said, you can't modify the username or the last name, but you can modify everything else. Okay, so if I needed to change the state or what have you, I could do that. And then obviously update the information or you could connect to your LinkedIn account. Now I do want to launch a poll here. You guys have been listening to me rattle on a little bit, so let's take a look. And I want to find out how your company currently takes a look at SolidWorks users. Okay, so some of the early votes coming in saying that you currently do not test prospects. <laughs> the discovery happens later. Well, that's good or bad depending on your scenario. A few of you have some custom in-house modeling exams. That's pretty common. You know, the senior engineer at your company says, well, I'm tired of users that can't model anything. I want to see if they can model this. And they pick out a fairly tricky part or what have you. So they go in there and they ask that candidate to take that test. And then after the candidate's done, they're all excited. They ask you for an interview. And you say, yep, we'll call you. And again, Essentially, they want the user to go away so you can study the model to see how they think in SolidWorks. All right, so it looks like majority of everybody has responded. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And this one I'm actually going to share with you guys so that way you can see. 
A majority of you do not currently find out if people are as good as they say they are in their resume. Well, that's, again, good or bad, depending on who you've had the opportunity to run across. Obviously, if you take a gamble on somebody and they work hard and they do well, that's awesome. Okay, but again, this is just food for thought. And yes, I would recommend taking a look at the certified SOLIDWORKS exams. This is a great way to do that for you. All right. So, big question, what are the prerequisites? Well, I don't have a complete list here, simply because there's a lot, but I picked some of the major ones, okay? Internet, do you need internet to take the exams? Yes, absolutely you will need internet. It's all done online, so you're gonna need that connection to the World Wide Web in order to download the test questions, take your tests, hit submit, and get your answer. Now, I've been in this game for a while, and you know, 14 years ago when I started, you actually had to come to our facility and take the exam in my classroom. Uh, and you know, the, the test I think was eight, eight hours at that time. Um, so you'd come down to our facility for an entire day and take the test in a, I'll say, foreign environment because it wasn't your own computer. You had to use ours, etc. But it's gotten a lot nicer. It's online. You can do it at your leisure okay let's see here having said that if your computer crashes will you lose all of your answers and the answer is yes you'll lose all your answers and no they don't offer refunds okay you will have to pay again to take the test again so good and bad right it's more convenient to take it on your own equipment but bad simply because it's up to you to make sure that you have a decent computer that's not going to crash in the middle of your exam. And one more big prereq here, which version of SOLIDWORKS is required? Well, each exam, again, with 16 plus certificate exams, each one's going to tell you the minimum required SOLIDWORKS needed, but I pulled the popular one here, SOLIDWORKS 2015 is required for the CSWP, Certified SOLIDWORKS Pro. Obviously anything newer will be fine. The main reason they put those constraints on there is simply because they might ask a question on a feature that was not in the older version of 2014 or prior that will be important for the context of the test. Likewise, you'll probably be downloading some models. And as you all know, SOLIDWORKS is not backwards compatible. Therefore, you'll need to have at least the minimum version that the parts you need to download and use were saved in. Okay, so the main certification goals here. Obviously the objective is to establish an industry standard test that is consistent across the board. So it's completely fair and equal. So when one user says, hey, I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS professional, and another user says the same thing, chances are really good that they have the same level of skill. Granted, some might even be better than the other one, but at least they've met that minimum of what it takes to become a certified professional, certified associate, etc. And again, I already mentioned this, but for hiring managers, this is a great way to find out if the candidate knows what they're doing and they're as good as their resume says they are. Okay, excellent. So, for some general certification tips, you're going to want to make sure to take a look at the specific exam on SOLIDWORKS.com and look at the prereqs for that exam. Again, with 16 different tests, it's hard to put all of those prerequisites on one page. I would go to that test, take a look at all of that, and make sure that you have met those prerequisites. If you haven't, a majority of the prerequisites are going to recommend training classes. Please check out decisolutions.com forward slash training and you can take a look at our class descriptions. And then obviously book the class in that topic that you're interested in. You can contact Kevin over here, our training coordinator. He'll be happy to sit you into my classroom, especially if you're out here in Arizona. That's awesome. If not, obviously we have classrooms throughout the country. Yes, we highly encourage that you get into class. But the number one thing, again, as a serial instructor, 
ask the questions when you're in class. Please, please, please. We can give the presentation uninterrupted, maybe even entertain the audience, but if they don't ask the questions when they're in class, it's kind of tough to know what you needed before you left. So make sure that you know that the class is for you. Even if you give us a hard time, that's why we're there. Okay, we want to make sure that you get the material that you came to us for. Now, after you take the class with us, don't forget that you can download your training files, right? So all the models that we utilized in class are available on SolidWorks.com from the training area. Here I've given the same links that are available within your training book on page three. It tells you where you can download your training files and then you'll be able to go through there. It even has the completed or finished versions of the chapters that we go through, all the case studies and the exercises. For additional study, you can check out 3dcontentcentral.com. If you haven't made your way over there, there's a great web repository, so 3dcontentcentral.com. You're gonna to wanna to look up the supplier of SolidWorks Part Reviewer, but this SolidWorks Part Reviewer catalog has three different areas for models okay you have basic models complex and moderate and then you have some different category tags now i will say that not all the tags are listed on the landing page here for example weldments there's no weldment tag here but when you dial into some of these different areas you're going to find weldment parts with a weldment tag okay it's just a matter of the web page right but I would highly recommend going through here and you'll be able to see different models that you can then download and roll through. Now the critical thing about these part reviewer samples is the fact that each part, the features as you roll through there, they all have comments applied to them. So that's when you're building a model, you can right click on any given feature, go to comment, add a comment, and then the next user that comes to modify that part, they'll be able to read that comment. So these models were built strictly for training, okay? It's highly, highly recommended that you check this out. And I guess that does mean you will need to have a 3D Content Central account. I didn't have a poll for this, but uh, yeah, you really should have one of these as well, okay? Aside from the Solders Part Reviewer, there's a lot of great parts that you can download from different vendors that have joined the 3D Content Central part library in the hopes that you'll download their models because that simply means you'll probably be by to purchase that part for your actual project. Okay, so there's part reviewer. Make sure that you download those and interrogate them. Practice your modeling speed. This is really important. After all, we're talking about industry level certifications. Okay, if you say, hey, I'm a certified SolidWorks, whatever else follows after that, that means that you know how to use SolidWorks and fairly quickly. Okay, so make sure that you are fairly quick. After all, you don't want to feel rushed on the exam. To help you with that, aside from our training classes, we do have a landing page for the certification. Okay, I mentioned that in the beginning here, that there's so much content. Essentially, we're going to have to guide you to that page right there, thesizesolutions.com. Check out our solder certification area. I will mention that that page is under construction right now. Okay, so you're not going to be able to find it just yet, but from decisolutions.com, you'll be able to hit the training drop down and click on solder certification. Okay, so this landing page again is going to get updated with all the content that I have prepared for the slideshow that just wouldn't fit in the time allotted but I imagine we'll make hyperlinks on each one of these and that'll take you to my recommendations for each test for getting prepped for it, okay? So again, this is the future landing spot certified recommendations from Desai for you guys to check out. So stay tuned on that one, it's coming soon. And in terms of webcast recommendations, you can check out our YouTube channel, Desai Solutions. We have an older video archive my original SolidWorks certification prep webcast is up there. Yeah, it's done in 2010, but a lot of it is all the current, right? It's great tips and tricks, some of which is duplicated here, but uh, definitely you're going to want to check that out. And obviously SolidWorks does provide some sample exams. 
Some of the sample exams are available from the virtual tester client, specifically the sample for the certified pro and the certified associate. Others, like on the CAM, those potentially are going to be PDFs up there. All right. And then one other thing here, your my.solders.com account. There are learning paths in different topics. Keep in mind that the mysolders.com learning paths, some of them do require an additional subscription. Now the standard subscription is included with your SolidWorks annual maintenance, but then there's a my.solders professional subscription. I think it's like $350 above and beyond your annual subscription for SolidWorks, but once you pay for that, you'll gain access to additional learning paths, which includes some of the exam prep content for the advanced exams and the certified pro. All right, now, before the test, I'm going to try to move through this stuff a little bit quick, but you can always come back and review it. Before the test, it's highly recommended that you have a secondary monitor. Now, obviously, most engineers already work with two monitors, but if you're one of those engineers that work out of a laptop, for the purposes of the exam, you're going to want to hook up to another monitor. That way, one monitor can show the test questions, and then on your primary laptop screen, you will have SolidWorks. Now that that big recommendation is out of the way, obviously you're going to want to make sure you get your coffee or other form of caffeine. We are not responsible if you happen to spill the coffee on your computer. <laughs> Speaking from experience, that can be a bummer, but obviously be careful. Use the restroom. I know this is simple stuff, folks, but uh, you might sit down to take a test. You're all excited to start, and then your bladder starts screaming at you. That's the wrong time to decide you need to go. So get that out of the way first. The other thing is you're going to want to inform your coworkers and everybody around you that you're going to take a test and not to bug you. If you have to lock yourself in your office or find some other quiet space where nobody's going to disrupt you. Turn off your email, your phone, your tablet or any other items that might disrupt your focus and blow your concentration. Nothing worse than sitting there with the time ticking down and it's a time test and you're not focused. Okay, the other thing to mention here, reboot your computer, especially if it's been a while. Like me, I have a bad habit of going three to four days without a reboot. Obviously, my RAM gets stacked up with different stuff. You're probably going to want to reboot, especially when Microsoft pushes out their updates for Windows. Yeah, especially if you keep saying, remind me later. At some point, Microsoft says, nope, I've warned you five times. You haven't reboot. I need to reboot now, and it will just reboot. It won't give you the option. Obviously, you don't want that happening during the test. Another big comment, we said that internet was required. Well, if you're running off Wi-Fi and it's slow or inconsistent, consider just plugging in. Grab a Cat5 cable, jack into the wall. Okay, yeah, you're tethered, but you know what? <laughs> you're going to get the test, and then you can untether, what have you. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Before the test, you're also going to want to generate some generic part templates for the test. You don't necessarily want to use your company templates. After all, your company templates have your company settings, units, etc. And you might as well just avoid that. It might mess you up on the exam. In this case, I'm recommending creating an inch and a millimeter template. So that'd be two different templates. And each one should have two place decimals for the units, both on the primary units and on your mass majority of the exams I believe all use two place decimal. In any case you're going to want to pay attention to that when you're in, in the exam. The other thing you're going to want to do when you are getting ready to take the test is you want to make a folder where you can stash all your downloads. Okay so when you take the exam like for the certified SolidWorks professional and you're going through the configurations they'll have you download a model so you can modify it. Well when you download that model you want to stash that in the folder that you have set aside. After all, you don't want to just download it into your My Documents along with the 50 camping pictures you might have stored in there. After all, just running through all your files, again, when the time's ticking, that's a little bit nerve-wracking. So just have a nice clean folder to put all that stuff. Now, here is a tough one. This is checking your ego at the door. Okay, this, again, serial instructor here mentioning that when I see students, if they come in with an ego the size of Texas, it's very hard to teach them anything. So here is kind of like the same advice here. Don't spoil your own chances by just assuming you're going to knock the test out of the park. Okay, Because if you go in there cocky, you're probably going to make simple mistakes. 
you're going to want to pay attention to the exam and only celebrate after you've passed. I know that's hard for some of us that want instant gratification. Oh, I'm going to pass. Hey, I'm just going to take the test. And then you blow it on something stupid. And then that's when you realize, oh, you mean if I fail this test, I got to pay again? Oh, right. Yes, you have to pay again. And by the way, even after you pay, you have to wait. Yeah, so if you fail a test, typically it's a month, you know, 30 days before you can take the test again. So you're going to have to go through all the setup all over again next month. Each exam has different wait periods, but the average is a month. So just know that uh, you don't want your ego to cost you a month of time. All right, and then obviously you download your tester client and dial in your voucher code if you have one or use your credit. And obviously try and relax. All right, during the test. So I've fired off the tester. I've, I've got the questions displayed in the virtual tester. My recommendation is to take a look at the test, roll through each one of the questions, and take a look at the different images that are provided on the part. You might want to cycle through all those pictures to kind of get an idea of what the part looks like. You know, formulate what it looks like in your head, and then start to develop a modeling strategy. After all, once you pick a strategy, you're not going to have time to decide that you need to start over. By the way, when you're doing this, you might want to download all the required test parts into your download folder. And another thing, it will mention where the origin should be for each question. Okay, if it says arbitrary, you can pretty much put it wherever you want. But specifically on things like the assemblies, they're going to say, hey, the origin goes here. Make sure you put that first part relative to the origin of the assembly because even if you get the assembly correct and you pull the center mass, if the center mass is calculating from a point out in space, you're going to get the wrong answer. Now, you can always overcome this if you're familiar with coordinate systems. Just drop in your coordinate system where the origin should have been and then take your mass properties from that user-defined coordinate system. Obviously, you're going to want to build your model from a datum structure. Your datum structure, that's something that we talk a lot about in our SOLIDWORKS Essentials course. You want to have a modeling strategy. All your dimensions go into the same edges, same faces. That is your datums. Now, make sure to pay attention to the test units. I'm recommending an inch and a millimeter template. Okay, so if the test is supposed to be millimeters, you want to make sure that you start with your millimeter template. By the way, don't forget to apply the material. If you don't apply the material, perfect geometry is not enough to get the correct answer. So not only is this a modeling test, but it's also an attention to detail test. You want to make sure that you're paying attention and you're doing exactly what they're asking you to do. Another pro tip here, I would highly recommend utilizing link values or global variables for the dimensions that will change throughout the exam. Typically, these dimensions are labeled with A, B, C, etc. You're going to want to assign those with, again, link values or global variables. That way, as you're moving through, you'll know which dimensions you need to modify or adjust. Another tip along with that, you can label your dimensions by naming them and then showing the dimension names. Also, during the test, I would highly recommend saving each question as that question number. So, question one part. Save that as Q1 part. Then when you go to question number two, file save as Q2 part. And keep doing that. After all, when you get to question number five, perhaps there's a fillet that you had forgotten. Okay, if you forgot a fillet on question five that was there back in question one, and you didn't save each question as its own name, then you're probably not going to have the time required to roll back all the numbers to the start values with that fillet and then answer the question versus if you had saved each question as its own number you essentially have revisions right so I have revision one two three four I can open up revision one add the fillet and then re-answer question one question two same story open rev two etc so this is all about planning folks make sure you have your ducks in a row you can certainly do it now one thing when you're looking at the images scattered throughout the test they're not mechanical drawings okay they're model views with dimensions this might be a little bit frustrating because the layout of where the dimensions are may not be exactly where you would have put them if it was your drawing but make sure you view each image carefully okay a few times I've caught myself thinking wow they missed a dimension here no the dimension was there it just wasn't on the view I would have chosen uh, on the image okay so make sure you look at each view for clarity and then another thing that you'll note sometimes these images might have duplicate dimensions 
So if I tried adding all these dimensions in my sketch, it'll probably over define it. Don't let that scare you. All they're doing is they're trying to identify the size of the features on the parts. Again, it's not an ANSI 14.5 drawing, you know, no duplicate dimensions, etc. It's just images of the model with all the dimensions, even if they're duplicate. So don't let that mess you up. Now, when you're modifying your part, your part may not always look like the image. Simply because they use these variables to flex the model, it's also how they randomize the test. Okay, so the images on the test might be of a slightly different ratio than yours. Again, don't let this scare you. The other comment here is the views shown in the images may not match your model. And if it doesn't, don't forget that you can use your shift and arrow keys to flip your model around 90 degrees and then you can right click and set the current view as whatever view it's supposed to be. So for example if you started sketching on the right plane because you thought that's what they were showing then when you go to the isometric it's backwards relative to the images in the test. Don't forget you can go to the front view right click set current view as the right and then now when you go to the isometric view it'll be correct and match those test images now this one should be fairly obvious. Make sure you know what the part looks like after all you've reviewed all those illustrations. Keep an eye on the clock. All right. Most of this advice is all about time. We had to choose something to put the pressure on. After all, if you were given enough time, anybody could probably figure out how to make all the changes accurately. But it is all about time and efficiency. So keep an eye on the clock. If it's possible, you can skip questions and move ahead. After all, if you get stuck on question five and there's 20 questions in the exam, you're going to run out of time. But if you skip question five, answer six, seven, 10, 15, whatever, even if you finish the exam or rather time runs out and you didn't answer question five, but you got all the ones that you did answer correct, then you'll still get the cert. That's much better than just not answering the ones you might have been able to. Now, obviously, this doesn't apply to the geometry tests. Those might require that question two is predicated on question one, question three predicated on question two. You can't skip those for obvious reasons. Now, some of the tests do have multiple models, in which case, if you're having a heck of a time with the first model, maybe the secondary model the one that's supposed to be more complicated <laughs> is actually easier for you. Yeah, go ahead and put that simple first model away that you're having trouble with. Do the, the moderate model and the advanced model. Finish those and then go back to the quote unquote simple model that was giving you fits. Now, here's the other side of it. If you finish and there's time left in the exam, don't just hit finish. Okay. I've, at this point, I would go through and double check, make sure that you didn't make any stupid mistakes like, hey, I forgot to assign the material or I just didn't add that fillet, what have you. That's when you want to just go through and make sure that everything is exactly the way that you thought it should be. And if you find a mistake, obviously correct yourself. Now, I'm not suggesting that you double think and change all of your answers. That's not the context of this advice but rather to make sure that you didn't miss something obvious. Now, don't forget the fillets. I can't stress this enough. All too often people get excited. They add the extrusions, the cuts, etc. They answer the questions and they forgot the fillets. So pay attention to that. Always use fully defined sketches. Absolutely, we hammer on that on all of our classes, particularly in the essentials course. That's your class. It's the fundamentals of what it takes to be a quality user. Right? So make sure you're paying attention to that. When you get to the assemblies, your mates are important. The order in which you apply them. You always mate between the primary components. Plate to plate, bore to bore on your holes. And then if you have pins, nuts, bolts, add that hardware very last. You don't want that bolt to be the parent of that union. And here's my pro tip. Make sure to fully define all your components in your assembly. Look for the minus symbol in the feature tree and make sure that that minus symbol is not present on any of those parts. That way you'll know that the parts are exactly where you're expecting it to be. If that minus symbol is in there, then the parts may not be where they need to be for your question, in which case you might get the wrong answer. By the way, when you are downloading these parts and opening them, occasionally FeatureWorks likes to ask if you want to run feature recognition on the parts. Please do not run feature recognition on any of the parts. If you do, it will use your default templates, which might be different units than what 
the part was originally saved as for you to use. This was not a test requirement. This was just FeatureWorks trying to be a hero saying, oh, imported geometry, I got that. Here, let's reverse engineer it. No, please don't. Don't waste time on that. It might mess you up. So don't run feature recognition. Also, don't forget about the SolidWorks help if you get stuck. All right, so what associate certifications are available? Well, obviously the SolidWorks associate. We also have one for simulation. Electrical, I mentioned additive manufacturing, that's for 3D printing. We have one in sustainability, that's going green. And the new 3D experience platform explorer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and launch a quick poll. I want to find out if any of you have passed any of these associate exams. So some of you, maybe not yet. I know a lot of folks, when I talk to them, they're like, well, I'm going to skip the associate. I'm going to go straight after the professional. That is obviously an option, but when you look at the number of associate exams that are available, there's quite a few. In fact, not all of them were able to fit on my multiple choice answers. So if you have the associate and maybe the additive manufacturing, you can check both of those. So cool. Looks like there's a few 3D printing wizards in here, some of the additive manufacturing have some electrical folks in here and 20 wow a quarter of you have the certified solders associate that's awesome congratulations by the way it's a great way to get started okay I'll give you a few more seconds here to vote and I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll and I'm gonna share the results here so a majority of you not yet uh, uh, have an associate but keep in mind there's all these other flavors and by the way, I would recommend doing the associate simply because it's a great way to get started and get indoctrinated on how the testing is going to work, right? Even if you're confident, you're ready for the professional, it doesn't hurt to do the associate, especially considering you get two credits for a core exam a year. You can take one certified associate and then one pro. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hide those results here. So on the certified associate, since a quarter of you already have this, you probably already know this, but for the rest of you that don't, the Certified Associate was first launched as a college test for students that have not been out in industry yet, in which case, yeah, there's some top-notch instructors. Again, I hail here from Arizona, so my buddy up in Flagstaff, Perry Wood, he teaches ME 180, Introduction to Engineering Graphics, and he focuses on design intent. Likewise, Gerald Lacey over here at Mesa Community College, certified SOLIDRX expert, great guy. He teaches the GTC 266 Solid Modeling with SOLIDWORKS, which I believe they're renaming that course this year to the MFG 254. Either way, two top-notch instructors that I'm pleased to call my friends. They will definitely take care of you if you're in the area. Or if you're not in Arizona and you have a college near you, obviously the SOLIDWORKS instructors there, most of them focus on design intent. Have a conversation with them. Say, hey, look, I, I'm interested in getting certified. I want to make sure that this is the right program for me. In fact, a lot of the colleges use the associate as a part of their curricula. Like after you've taken these classes, then the associate is kind of like your final or what have you. Again, it's all going to vary depending on the school. Or if uh, you're not in college or in college mode, don't forget our SOLIDWORKS Essentials course here with the SCI. You can come and join us and spend four days and we will indoctrinate you in all things SOLIDWORKS, design intent, plan for change, best practices, etc. And after that class, I'm confident that with a little bit of practice on modeling speed, you should be able to easily pass that certified SOLIDWORKS associate. And by the way, just to kind of kick some of you guys in the butt, Keep in mind there are high schools now that are offering the Certified SOLIDWORKS Associate. So there's high schoolers running around with the certificate. So if you have been using SOLIDWORKS for a while and you're a competent user, you might want to consider at least trying the test. Okay. Now in terms of a webcast recommendation, you can check out our website on YouTube. I mentioned that earlier in the Certified SOLIDWORKS Prep webcast that I was describing earlier. You can take a look at that. I have one on design planning that's all about design intent, plan for change. I mentioned that my.solidworks.com has some learning paths from the training dropdown on my.solidworks.com. You can check out the prep course and the sample exams. Those are part of the standard subscription. So if you have a SOLIDWORKS subscription, you can get access to these learning paths. 
for practice modeling. There is a sample for the certified associate. Please check that out. And then in terms of book recommendations, if you don't like viewing everything online, that's totally fine. There is a book put out by David Planchard. Okay, David has done exhaustive research on this stuff and he has put out a fine manual and it has some sample questions in there that will help gear you up for taking these exams. Okay, and by the way, it doesn't just cover the certified SolidWorks associate, but all of the associates, right? The uh, additive manufacturing, etc. Okay, now, which certifications are available for the professional level? Well, clearly the CSWP, the Certified SolidWorks Professional, that's the industry standard test. Okay, I mentioned that the associate is a great place to get started, absolutely. Okay, but after you've done the associate, the professional is really what you're going to want. That, again, should be the de facto standard. Now, the CSWP for model-based definition for companies that are doing ASMEY 14.41, the drafting standard, which essentially takes all of your drawing dimensions, but they are applied to the 3D model. This is the test that checks your knowledge in that. They just recently released the CSWP for CAM. So, as you know... CAMWorks has partnered up with SOLIDWORKS and we offer SOLIDWORKS CAM. Therefore, the CSWP CAM utilizes that technology and tests your knowledge for taking your model and setting up machining paths for tooling. And then we have the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional for Simulation. This is a test on FEA and analysis within SOLIDWORKS. So, I'm going to go ahead and launch another poll here. Let's see if how many of you have had an opportunity to earn one of these certified SOLIDWORKS professional certificates. Excellent. Looks like 14% uh, of you have the certified SOLIDWORKS professional, but I'm not seeing any of the other ones. And that's okay. They, they've added quite a number of certificates, but again, it's based on industry demand and industry need. Like, hey, we need to know if a user knows how to use simulation proper. And by the way, that CSWP simulation does have a hand calculation on there. I mean, it's not just about software, folks. It is checking general competency. Okay, a majority of you voted. So I'm going to go ahead and close that poll, and I will share these results. So congratulations for the 12% of you that are certified for the professional. That's awesome. Okay, keep it up. You know, the next stage is obviously going to be the experts, and we will definitely talk about that. So, good job. All right, let's take a look at the CSWP. Now, if you want the industry standard test, my recommendations are going to be our training classes. Obviously, if you haven't taken essentials, no matter how long you've been using SOLIDWORKS, please consider attending our SOLIDWORKS Essentials course. I was talking about Jason Ferris earlier, one of our certified SOLIDWORKS experts. He came into my classroom after being a 20-year user. And usually when I get an advanced user like that, I start to wonder if they are going to be a good student or they're going to ignore me half the time. Jason came in, perfect gentleman. It was great. He was like a kid in a candy store. He's like, I'm here to learn. Yeah, I've been using it forever, but I'm here to learn what you guys have to show. So he went through the class. He did amazing. And within, like I said, a year and a half, he attended a bunch of our classes and got started up all the way to expert. That can be you too, folks. Uh, right? I, I love sharing his success story just because it's personally gratifying as an instructor when I go through and I share this stuff to see what you guys do with it. That's what excites me. And again, that's why I've prepared this certification prep webcast and obviously this tips and tricks and everything that I'm sharing with you. It's because I want to see you do your best. And if I can help you get there, that's the main goal. All right, so yes, please attend our essentials course and our assembly modeling and part modeling courses. Obviously, you can check out some of the videos on our YouTube channel. Now, there is a learning path on my.solidworks. However, it requires the my.solidworks professional subscription. So yeah, $350, you can get access to these prep courses. For practice modeling, I would highly recommend going through the sample exam for the Certified SolidWorks Associate and Professional. And for studying, obviously review your training manuals along with the files that you can download for each book. And concentrate on the topics that are listed on the CSWP landing page. 
Don't forget the part viewer samples. I mentioned that for extra tips. And again, these just represent best practices. You want to avoid sketch fillets. Sketch fillets end up making a mess of your model. And yeah, you just want to add that fillet as a feature if at all possible. Make sure you're comfortable mating between planes in your assemblies and know how to make coordinate systems and use mass properties. That way, if you did accidentally place the origin in the wrong spot, no problem. You can insert a coordinate system where the origin should have been and then you'll be able to measure from that coordinate system. Don't forget you can download your training files. I keep mentioning that. That's key. Page number three in your training manual talks about getting a hold of those. And in terms of a book recommendation, David Planchard has also put out an official guide for the Certified SolidWorks Pro. You can get these books from STC Publications. All right, let's take a look. What advanced professional certs are available? Well, this is where we start getting in more industry specific. Okay, if you use the sheet metal tools within SolidWorks because you work for a sheet metal house, this is going to be the test that you're interested in. Right, so you have your sheet metal, your weld mints, surfacing, mold tools, and drawing tools. Okay, and in fact, the mold tools has been renamed to the mold making, and it actually got an overhaul this year. So the mold making, in fact, if you've taken the mold tools in the past, you might want to consider taking the mold making one as well. They've added a lot more industry questions on that one. And then the drawing tools, that's to check your drawing capabilities utilizing the drawing tools. So let me go ahead and launch another quick poll here. Find out if any of you have had an opportunity to take any of these advanced exams. Cool, got some sheet metal users in here, that's awesome. Some drawings, great. Hey, there's some weldment users. And some surfacing, all right. Surfacing is one of the more difficult ones. And then the mold tools, i.e. mold making, doesn't look like there's any there. Give you a few more seconds here to vote. Okay, five seconds. Only got a third of you voting here. There we go, that jumped up. A few more of you voted, awesome. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and close the polls here and share that result. So it looks like a majority of you have the sheet metal of those that have taken the exams and then a few of you have the drawing tools. That's great. Now, the reason that these are important is of course the expert, in which case you'll need four of the five advanced exams. Okay, so for these advanced exams, the drawing tools, this is gonna be one of those that you can take. Now, our recommendation is obviously checking out our SolidWorks drawings class, and there is a my.solidworks professional learning class for this. Again, that additional subscription at my.solidworks.com. For study, obviously the SolidWorks drawings book, you're gonna to wanna to focus on the topics listed on that exam. And then you can check out the sample exam that's available. And for extra tips, make sure you know how to project views. Project from a projected view. Make sure you're comfortable with the auxiliary views. Don't forget that you can sketch a line in projected view from that sketch line. Make sure you're comfortable with custom views from the assembly bring into the drawing or at the part to bring into the drawing. And don't forget that you can generate equations in your bill of material. And for a book recommendation, you can check out the Certified SolidWorks Professional Advanced Preparation Manual. This manual written by Paul Tran, who's a certified SolidWorks instructor. All right, so now the one that most of you are hanging out here for most likely, especially if you already have the Certified Pro and some of the advanced exams, is the expert. Okay, now, in order to qualify to take the Certified SolidWorks Expert, you must have passed four of the five advanced topics. And if this is your goal, I highly encourage you, keep going. It's an awesome test, and there's not a whole lot of Certified SolidWorks Experts out there. So if you join that class, you're gonna be in an elite class of users throughout the world. And by the way, for you simulation users, there's going to be an expert test coming soon. I've heard it's going to be released in the second quarter this year. So that's just around the corner, provided everything goes well with the certification test writers. I've been talking to Yannick and he said that it should be ready to go and he wanted me to mention it to you guys. So you heard it here first. <laughs> the certified sim 
expert is coming very soon so like I said just stay tuned and let's see if there's any experts here cool looks like some of you have the desire to go after it that's perfect and wow looks like we have an expert in the house congratulations that's awesome alrighty I'll give you guys a few more seconds here to vote wow I got 70 percent of you in I'll give you a few more seconds here and alright three quarters of you closing the polls and you can take a look here so we have a certified expert in the house awesome that's great I'm glad to hear that and then 62 percent of you you're planning on being one in the future that's perfect I hope that we can help get you there make sure you do attend training with us if your company has a training budget what better way to spend it than in our classroom playing I'm sorry not playing but using SOLIDWORKS it's a lot of fun obviously I'm passionate about it right so forgive the Freudian slip there but absolutely using SOLIDWORKS leveraging that CAD system that we all love and know okay so make sure that you uh, take advantage of that we'd love to see you in class here all right so for the certified SOLIDWORKS expert by the time you've gotten here you've met the prerequisites to have taken and passed for the five advanced topics okay so there's not a whole lot extra to prepare for obviously we're going to show you some stuff but yeah bottom line you you've made it a long way so my best advice is to practice troubleshooting break models fix them right take a model that was designed to do a and force it to do b this is the sort of curveballs that you're going to find in the certified solidrix expert test they're going to give you a model that wasn't made to do that, but they want you to do that. After all, that's kind of how they're testing your metal to see what you can make SOLIDWORKS do. All right, so keep in mind the certified expert might have challenges in the following areas. One thing I would recommend is make sure that you are familiar with sketch blocks, okay, and using traction relationships right obviously we have the gear mate for assemblies and belt chain stuff but did you know you could also do that in sketch blocks well if not here's my quick message to you check those out because you're probably going to need them in the test hint hint all right and then there is a hard book recommendation also from SDC publications Mr. Paul Tran has prepared a SOLIDWORKS expert prep manual for you to take a look at so hopefully this has been very informative in which case I want to leave you guys with my final thoughts okay prepping for these different certifications is not the main reason to follow everything that I'm mentioning here I said before these also represent best practices that you should be using every day learning the tips and tricks just for passing the certification exams really defeats the purpose of the entire certification program the objective is to help establish a baseline by which all users should strive for therefore you want to make sure that you are practicing these best design practices daily and the other thing here is that after you have become certified share that with others show them how you did the different design intent elements help them learn and understand what it is and how they can apply it to their own models it's a win-win because now you're going to get better at what you're doing and then your team is also going to get better because they'll learn some of your tips and tricks and keep in mind that the learning never stops okay again Jason Ferris 20 year user came in my classroom to learn voila it paid off in spades for him that's awesome he could have very easily said you know what I've been there done that don't need it and yeah but he didn't he did awesome he went in there and decided to take advantage of the training so don't forget the learning doesn't stop even after you are certified thank you for your time if you have any additional questions please email us tech support at decisolutions.com and also stay tuned for our certification landing page that we will be putting up shortly I appreciate your guys's time take care God bless